don't know what that was. But anyways, hey guys, Alex here, AJNashville.com. Um, wanted to talk to you about the different stages of getting a loan from start to finish. Um, this is from origination to closing table. The reason why I'm wanting to do this is there's a lot of people that uh, they think that, hey, you pull my credit, credit's done, I tell you how much we're going to close. doesn't work like that. Uh, there's a lot of steps that come into play. There's a lot of different factors. There's a lot of moving pieces. If you could imagine taking a Rolex watch, looking at it and saying, wow, that's a beautiful watch. It tells time, the second hand moves, everything looks great. But if you bust that thing open, you'll find out that there's thousands of little pieces that make everything that you see happen the way you see it happen. This is what I'm going to break down for you. So the first thing you have is the origination of the loan. That's when a real estate partner, um, a referral, uh, a different source says, hey, I have somebody that's looking to get a loan. Um, you then make contact with that person and you do what's called an application. You figure out what it is that the client wants what it is that they need, kind of their budget, their price range, different elements of what it's going to take to make sure that you take care of this client and give them the best possible loan. The next thing is the pre-qualification. This is when you look at credit, income, um, you look at their rental history, you look at their assets, you look at every element that would give you an indication if this client is ready and willing to pay this loan back. Basically it's like a first date. You know, you get together, you say, hey Jeff, I like your shoes, you're a good looking guy, you know, and, and you figure out his history and everything else, hashtag no homo, but you figure out his history and everything else and that's a pre-qualification. Typically that's done verbally. Uh, once we do this, we ask for what's called a needs list. A needs list is gonna take that date and make everything official. So, excuse me, you may ask for tax returns, W-2s, pay stubs, bank statements, social security card, driver's license, all those items that will allow us to verify that you are indeed who you say you are, that you indeed make what it is you say you make, uh, because you do have a lot of clients that are partially commissioned, partially uh, wage earners, and what you'll have is they say, I make $10,000 a month. Then you'll find out that 2,000 of it's a draw, 8,000 of it's commission, and last month was the only month they ever made $10,000 a month. That doesn't really work, so that's why this process takes a little bit of time. It's not about just picking up the phone and saying, hey, this is what I do, this is what I make, this is what I get, give me a house. It doesn't always work that fast. In some cases it can, in some cases it takes a little more time in this stage. Next is contract. By that time they've jumped in a car, they went riding around with one of their agents. Their agents found them the perfect house, they put them under contract, they sign it, they bind it, they send it over to us. With all sections filled out, all sections. Uh, FHA addendum if there is one, sales price, buyers and sellers, full first and last name, things like that, you know, the basic stuff that we forget a lot. Um, then it goes over to my file starter. So once all this information is gathered, okay, Jeff then says, I need these remaining documents, which are, you know, maybe they missed giving us a divorce decree, maybe they missed giving us a pay stub, something like that. Jeff will then gather that and have the appraisal and have title ordered this way it's done on the front end. Those are typically the longest process things. Jeff will then get everything together, send out the documentation so the client can acknowledge everything. Here's where it's very important. RESPA guidelines require us to have wet signatures. We, we are required to have certain things signed prior to moving forward if it has not been disclosed within a certain time period. So if I disclose it and you realistically have three days to fill out or to receive and review the information, then I can start ordering stuff, but I can't charge you for anything until you actually physically sign stuff. So signing documentation is A1. If I send you some documents and say, hey, do me a favor, I need these signed. It's not, well, you know, I'm going to Florida this weekend. I'll think about getting it done Monday and not get it done until Tuesday. That is creating a delay. Then you have to, in your mind, think every delay is gonna create a delay in the back end. Once again, like that watch, if you're missing cogs on one of the gears, you're gonna skip an important piece before it kicks back in and starts rolling again, okay? So let's not miss those cogs, let's get everything signed ahead of time. This is where the loan officer and the loan officer assistant step in, hold those people accountable and say, hey, I need these documents. And they say, I don't have a scanner. Guess what, Walmart sells them for $15.99, go get one. Or run down to the public library, take care of it there. There are ways to scan things, even take pictures to make sure you send everything over to us. Then it goes to processing, okay? This is where my girl Tiffany comes in. 
She then takes this, she verifies everything, verification of employment. So, remember we talked about the person that only made $10,000 last month, and every month before, that person's realistically made five. This is where that verification comes in. If we get everything back and it says you made $5,000 a month up until last month, that's an issue. Um, if you said you've been with the company for two and a half years and then we find out it's only been a year and a half, that's an issue. We have to verify and make sure that you have employment for at least two years or at least a two year history, uh, residential history for at least two years. Doesn't always mean you have to be paying bills, stuff like that. Doesn't mean you even have to be in the same line of work. You know, you could have worked at um, Denny's for six months as a waitress and before that you were at Connors for a year and a half as a waitress. We can still count that as the same line of work. Uh, if you're bettering yourself in a W-2 position, we can still count that. If you go from an engineer with XYZ engineering to a engineer at ABC engineering and you're making $70,000 a year as opposed to 50,000, that's okay. Now, that same thing, if you go from selling cars commission-based to selling homes commission-based, that's not gonna work. We have to have two years worth of employment history. Um, underwriting, so once everything gets verified, it gets packaged up into this beautiful little piece and we send it to our underwriters. And the underwriters, you have to think of these people at this point as somebody that has to make a judgment without knowing both sides of the case. Think of an underwriter as a judge. So a person that sits there, you present all the facts, you ask them for what you're looking for, and they make a decision based on the facts that have been submitted. If we are missing facts, that's gonna hurt us. If you say, hey, I got the money in a 401k, but in the process you change your mind and your uncle's gonna give you the money for the down payment, we have to know that as your loan officer so we can present that as factual evidence to our judge. So the judge is gonna come back and say, I understand the evidence that you provided, but I need a little more clarification on this. Where were you on the night of the 15th? I still know what you did last summer, that type of stuff. So you may have to, to um, do a letter of explanation, uh, maybe provide additional documentation. This is called the stipulation stage. Got to drink water. Fat people sweat. Uh, <laughs> so stipulation page, that's when the underwriter comes back and they say, hey, you give me some updated W-2s, or hey, by the way, no, it's not okay for you to black out every line of your bank statements. Please do not do this. Do not take a marker, a pen, or anything to any documentation that doesn't have a signature line and you're just signing your signature. I see it time and time again, people are like, I don't want them to know I go to McDonald's every week, and they'll cross it out, then we'll get it, and we'll request a new one, and they'll say, wait a minute, I already sent you that. Yes, Mr. Client, Mrs. Client, you did. However, you sent it to us with blacked out information. Post underwriting, <coughs> excuse me, that's where they review stipulations. All they're doing is a rediscovery at that point. They're looking at stipulations. They're saying, okay, they did provide proof of this. They did provide proof of that. Now, that being said, if you provide an updated bank statement, all of a sudden there's a $10,000 large deposit in there that nobody knows where it comes from, they're gonna come back and say, hey, where did that $10,000 come from all of a sudden? We want an explanation. So don't do anything funky at this phase, okay? Leave it as it is. If you do, do something funky, talk to one of us. Let us know, we'll fix it for you. We'll figure out what it is, we'll explain it, we'll tell you what letter to write. Um, we will gather the facts and present those facts to the underwriter as they sit with us. We just wanna make sure that we capture that before it goes back up to underwriting to be sure that that's handled so we don't get restit. Once that's cleared, goes to the closing department. Closing department puts together the package. They send out the CD or the closing disclosure, not the compact disc. I know there's some 80s realtors on here like, oh yeah, the CD. I used to have Timmy T and Belle Bib DeVoe on a CD. That's not the same thing. So the closing department puts it together. They send it out to title. Title approves it, matches with their fees. It comes back, goes to the closing table. That's when everybody sits down. There's that uncomfortable giggle. This person over here says, I'm buying my first home. I'm so excited. Can't believe I had to bring you guys 7,500 bucks. Yep, you're buying your first home, you're excited. And then you have the other people sitting at the table. Everybody's happy, everyone's excited. It's an emotional day. Hopefully it's the best day of your life. Then we fund it. So once everybody signs, buyers and sellers side, we get confirmation, we send out a funding number. Funding number allows them to release the wire. Everybody gets their money, everybody makes it rain, everybody's happy. So, do we have any questions? I know I probably missed things. Also one thing, I want to include my NMLS number, 302991. My name is Alex Jimenez. I am with Hancock Mortgage Partners. Just in case the CFPB is watching.
Any questions? No CFPB yet. All right. Well, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> so no one's cutting our broadcast, basically. Jeff, focus. Nothing, nothing yet. Okay, no questions. No. Nope. Good. Okay, so this will break it down. This is just a great example of what we go through, what you go through as a realtor, what your client goes through. These are just pieces of the puzzle. They may vary <coughs> from company to company. Some companies underwrite it backwards, I will tell you this much. Although that is an awesome feature that they underwrite it backwards and they say, okay, we're going to underwrite it, give you a pre-qualification letter, send them out, find a house, and then we'll finish it once it comes in. I've been doing this long enough to where I can look at a file, look at income, look at credit, look at bank statements, and make a determination if this is an approvable loan. If it's sketchy, we may skip some of this and go straight to underwriting and say, hey, do me a favor, will you review this file because this is kind of sketchy, I want to make sure this fits. We have the ability to do that, but I am a licensed loan officer. I'm a professional in this industry. I am what I would consider a top professional in this industry. Not trying to toot toot my own horn, but um, I should be able to look at a file and say, hey, based on the surface, this qualifies. Now, if you had a foreclosure you didn't tell me about because your ex-wife ruined your credit and everything else, that's on you. You know, that, that can't really be held by me, but if there's something funky, we'll skip all this and go straight to underwriting. Make sense? Questions, comments, concern? All right, thanks so much for tuning in, guys. Have a great weekend.